London's success rests upon its transport network. It always has done. From the first tube between Paddington and Farringdon, dug by hand in the 1860s, to the Elizabeth Line, dug by thousand-ton boring machines a century and a half later. The next mayor of London is going to be responsible for one of the biggest and most complex transport systems in the world, over a thousand kilometers of road, rail, and tunnels. And if you stretched it out, it would be longer than Land's End to John O'Groats. It handles 24 million journeys every single day. And as any London MP will tell you, every single one of those journeys really matters. Transport issues account for roughly half of my post bag, or almost all of it, if you take into account Heathrow. It, I, I cannot exaggerate how many times I've had letters from commuters in my own constituency about the unreliability of Southwest trains, or from pensioners needing better buses to get to their hospital appointments, or Richmond Park users complaining about the tensions between motorists and cyclists, or delays, endless delays on the district line. And as an MP, it is frustrating that there is often so little that we can do to improve the situation. Writing to TfL for the 100th time to explain that the 65 bus is overstretched and overcapacity, only to be told yet again that no, it isn't. Bypassing that bureaucracy, getting things done, getting London moving is one of the reasons I want to do this job. And the good news is that we've seen record investment under Boris Johnson. London transport is safer, it's healthier, it's more reliable. Tube delays are down 40%. Crime on buses has halved. Cycling has doubled. But the system is under huge pressure, and that pressure is going to grow. Our population is set to grow to around 10 million people by 2030. And already, the average motorist spends nearly an entire week in a year stuck in traffic. Some of our busiest stations are dangerously overcrowded now in rush hour. Air pollution, overwhelmingly from vehicles, is taking far too many lives every single year in London. But it's not just about keeping London moving. We also have to get London building. The single biggest thing we can do to tackle the housing crisis, the biggest issue London faces, is to grow our transport network, using rail, tube, and tram to turn the vast areas of neglected brownfield land into homes, places that developers want to develop and where Londoners want to live. Just look at Barking Riverside, where 11,000 new homes just got the green light. Overall, we know that the site could accommodate 26,000 new homes. But here's the thing. It is only because of, possible because of a planned overground extension. If you scrapped that extension, Barking Riverside would only be able to deliver around 1,500 new homes. So all of this points to one thing. Transport needs investment, and anything that jeopardizes that investment would be wildly irresponsible, which is why my Labour opponent Sadiq Khan's transport experiment is just so dangerous for London. It would blow a 1.9 billion pound black hole in transport for London's budget. And you don't have to just take my word for it. Ask any independent transport expert. Ask the current or even the former TfL commissioner. They are all agreed that you cannot take 1.9 billion pounds out of the budget and at the same time protect that crucial investment. It is just not possible. Now Khan, of course, says that he can. He uses David Brent corporate speak about sweating the assets to achieve his goal. But what does that mean? His union paymasters would never allow him to take the necessary but tough decisions. The only savings that he's pointed to so far are actually costs, cancelling new buses that are already on order, closing down a cable car, which would end up costing £20 million. If you add up all the promises he has made in relation to transport, he has spent the transport budget before a single bus has left the station. And that's why he has finally opened the door to massive council tax hikes, just as his Labour opponent, his Labour predecessor did all those years ago, and why sooner or later he's going to have to admit that his plans mean cancelling vital tube and rail upgrades. The truth is, when Khan talks about sweating the assets, he's talking about the bus that you couldn't catch because it was too full. He's talking about the last train cancelled because of yet another signal failure. He's talking about another missed bedtime. Khan's experiment will bring London to a standstill, but just as serious 
it will make solving the housing crisis almost impossible. Without that 1.9 billion pounds, we can't grow the network. If we can't grow the network, we can't unlock the brownfield land we need for those homes. It means either not building, or it means building on our precious green spaces. My action plan for Greater London will deliver the transport London needs. It's a plan to invest in keeping London moving while tackling congestion on our roads. It's a plan to get London building by investing in the upgrades that will unlock that brownfield land. And it's a plan to green our transport system even as we grow it so that Londoners can get around in air that is safer to breathe. But it's not enough to just have a plan. You have to be able to deliver that plan. London only gets to keep around 7% of the taxes that we raise. So the next mayor will have to work with this government to secure the powers and the funds we need to deliver that infrastructure. And there is only one candidate in this contest who you can be sure will secure the best deal for London. So this is what my action plan for Greater London means for transport. First, I'll act to keep London moving. I'll protect plans to expand capacity by a third at key pressure points on the London Underground, the District, Circle, Metropolitan, Hammersmith and City Lines. I'll deliver the night tube and I'll extend it. I'll relieve pressure on London's roads by getting lorries off them with more consolidation centres and more freight carried by river and by rail. I'll close London's north-south divide on transport, bringing an overground level of service to the whole of South London. When our substandard suburban rail services come up for renewal, I will work with the government to transfer them to Transport for London. I'll roll out a range of improvements on the tube, much, much greater step-free access, additional policing at night, and I will protect concessionary travel, including the Freedom Pass. Second, I will protect plans to grow the network so that we get London building. And that means extending the Northern Line, the Croydon tram link to Sutton, the overground to Barking Riverside, and ultimately it means delivering Crossrail too. Together, these projects could unlock 270,000 new homes for London. Crossrail 2 alone will generate 200,000 jobs in London. But all these projects cost money. Extending the tram link to Sutton will cost 200 million pounds. Crossrail 2 could cost up to 30 billion pounds. So it is vital that the next mayor can work with this government to raise the funds and to find new ways uh, to raise finance for these sorts of projects. Now, I won't accept any waste at all at TfL. I will bear down on fares at every conceivable opportunity, but I will not put at risk the urgent investment needed in London's transport infrastructure. Third, I'll clean up our air. Greater London as a whole needs to become a pollution-free area. Cycling has doubled in the past decade under Boris Johnson, and it will need to double again. I'll continue Boris's efforts to make cycling easier and safer. And that means cutting the number of lorries on our roads. It means upgrading the 33 dangerous junctions already identified by TfL and more. It means extending cycle hire schemes to the outer boroughs. It means building more segregated lanes on our roads. But cycling is just a part of the solution. We have the technology and we have most of the tools we need to make London a pollution-free area. I'll clean up our cabs and buses. I'll back the cleanest possible cars. And you will know from my record as a lifelong environmentalist that I will deliver. And I said we have most of the tools we need, but we do need more from government. And I will press a government for a London diesel scrappage scheme to enable us to take the most polluting cars off our road. And I will fight to ensure that Heathrow expansion remains off the agenda for good, backing an airport solution based on competition and choice, not on monopoly. Now that's what my action plan means for transport. Investment protected, homes built, pollution tackled, a plan building on economic security, not the green belt. It is a very clear choice at this election between Khan's reckless experiment with London's future and my plan to secure that future. If I'm backed on May the 5th, by the end of my term, the night tube will be a huge success. Crossrail 1 will be open for business and boosting London's business. We will have a deal signed on Crossrail 2 and the funding secured by working with this government. Commuters in South London will no longer have to put up with a second-rate service. There will be fewer lorries on our roads, more bikes, more electric cars. And building work will have begun on the tens of thousands of homes we need in London to solve the housing crisis. 
London breathing better, commuting quicker, cycling safer. I'm standing for a transport system worthy of the greatest city on earth. Thank you very much indeed.